All right, so now we've uh, got our hood all etched prime. So the next step is going to be put some primer on there. We could go right to some sealer, but we're going to do some uh, primer on here so it has a little bit of uh, build on that front edge and it's got a little protection underneath the hood. Uh, I did want to point out one thing to you though. I went to the uh, MP4 2K section and uh, they keep referring to the MP4 2K and all the uh, captions here to use in place of the edge primer or the 600 okay the 550 and the 600 can be used over an entire panel and it is an acid etch this primer is just a catalyzed product and uh, it might have some sort of adhesion added to it but it's not a chemical process uh, here's the footnotes Ooh, sorry about that guys MP4 2K substrates again galvanized steel bare steel this is where it's deceiving there's no asterisks so a lot of guys don't even drop down and read this paragraph below here and if you read the paragraph below it tells you to prep clean sand prep the surface and they want you to use some 550 or some 600 on there. So, there you go. They're telling you to use the 550, even though they refer to this as the primer to use. It says right here, less than six inches. And then it says that you should really use adhesion promoter with it in the footnotes. So, that's why I don't use that kind, just for future reference. Uh, Guy in the garage once told me that there's no one 301 product or they would uh, put themselves out of business. So anyway, this is what we're going to be using next, some uh, 2K PB. This is Matrix Premium Primer. It says in the instructions for maximum holdout, and that's what we're looking for. Uh, this isn't quite as thick as the, uh, uh, what is it, the HS3. What a lot of guys like to use. Well, that's not important right now, but it's a, uh, you know, it's a high solid primer, high build, but uh, you know, it, it doesn't do body work. It's just a primer. So anyway, let's go ahead and uh, mix some of this up. Uh, what I've done, I followed the instructions on the uh, the 550. You know. We've done everything that they asked us to do on this page. We've uh, sanded it. We've applied our 550. I will show you in the footnotes here. Uh, it says that it dries in 30 to 60 minutes. After 30 minutes, you know, they suggest to run a little scotch bright pad over it. They say 24 hours, but I like to run the scotch bright over it as soon as it dries, just to give it a little scratch. And then if you read the technical notes here, I always say read the asterisks. Tet tip. Must be sanded prior to for mechanical adhesion so uh, they're saying you have to sand it if you're going to top coat it with base coat and if it sits more than 24 hours but uh, you know we're not talking about a real aggressive sand all I did was lightly go over it with some uh, red scotch right here so it's got a little bit of a scratch and uh, we're going to go ahead and throw some primer over this next so let's mix that up now guys on the stand here so we've already stirred the primer up got that ready to go this primer is four to one no reducer it says right in the uh, right in the destructions that they don't recommend reducer with this product so, uh, you want to add some reducer to your primer, this isn't the right one for you. Uh, so the primer can have reducer added to it, it'll, it'll tell you in the book that you can put reducer in it. But there are a few uh, matrix primers that you can't put reducer in. Uh, 
This is one of them. I know the uh, MP3, you can put a, uh, up to 10%, I believe. I don't use it a lot. I know Greg Porter likes it. And uh, it's a super thick primer. A lot of times, a lot of guys, what they'll do is they'll prime the car, block it with 180, and they'll go back with some 600 or 400, and then they'll paint it. And really, you should reprime after you do the 180 step so you have proper uh, film build of the primer left when you put the top coat on. A lot of time, people, uh, after they get done doing all their sanding, they have very little primer there. So that can be an issue, you know. Always uh, reprime after you 180, and you'll get a lot nicer job. Uh, you know, you make the car straight with the one prime, and then you're taking the scratch out with the second one. But it's personal preference, however you like to do it. Uh, it's better to prime it twice instead of uh, trying to bury it all on at one time. So, if you find yourself priming your car, we always remember, you know, give it a 180 prime, and then after you get it in 180, reprime it again, and then do your 600 sand. So we got that stirred up real good. Not a huge tip, but it is, you know, I don't have any problem with it putting the primer on. We're going to adjust the fan all the way open, we're going to make sure our trigger's set up. And uh, we'll step out here and uh, throw a little primer on. This stuff's stinky too. Make sure you wear your mask, respirator, well ventilated area, safety glasses, all that good stuff. All right, so what I've done here is I scuffed, uh, scuffed the back side of this up with a red scotch spray pad. And I lightly scuffed the edge where we put our uh, edge primer. And then I've gone on the other side here and I've uh, sanded it with 320 uh, where my overspray might land. You always want to have uh, your primer landing on a sanded surface, you know. You don't want to have a shiny surface and then have your primer land on top of it. It'll never feather back. So at least make sure you got a 320 scratch on the outside edge of your repair so you can get your uh, primer feathered back. You can fill a 180 scratch if you want. I always like the finish in 320. It just makes it uh, cover that much faster. pretty light pretty close to white you know uh, it's a pale color it's not exactly buff or yellow but, uh, 
that's all we'll need right there on the bottom. We'll just give that a little scuff with a red scotch tray pad and then we'll top coat it with some color and uh, throw our pad back on. Maybe put some uh, NP500 over that, some um, base coat clear on the bottom of the hood with a little bit of hardener in it. Then we'll flip our hood over tomorrow and uh, do the other side. We'll sand our primer on this edge and uh, we'll color the edge and clear the whole panel. So, uh, I guess some guys could burn that edge in, you know, but we're not going to try to do that on this. It's sort of a newer car, so we're just going to uh, cut in the bottom accordingly and then flip it over tomorrow after the primer dries. It's a little cold here today. And uh, we'll get that sanded down and uh, get this hood knocked out and put back on the car. But uh, it's an aluminum hood. That's sort of the process we take. Uh, somebody asked me if there was anything different. And really, aluminum's no different than uh, steel, you know. Uh, you have to take the same steps if it's bare. Uh, if it steel's got air e-coat on it, you can uh, scotch spray it and go from there. Depending on the quality of the e-coat, you know. Uh, different uh, manufacturers have different quality e-coat. The e-coat is the black that comes on the parts when you buy them. Uh, GM salt tests all their parts, so their e-coat's good for five years, supposedly. But a lot of the aftermarket companies don't salt test their uh, e-coat and uh, wipes right off a of lacquer thinner. Uh, those are the ones you want to strip and make sure that you uh, start from the bare metal process so you don't have anything creepy crawling around on you or uh, puking underneath whatever you put on top of it. So, so we got this dealy here uh, squared away. No more uh, corrosion. No more... Uh, Electrolysis is what it's called, I guess, but the corrosion is what it looks like. Chalkiness, you know. Uh, we took care of that with the acid etch. And uh, now we're uh, just hitting it with a little bit of primer. And uh, that should take care of this one. This primer dries nice and fast. I like that about it. It's not a lightning prime, but uh, it's not a slow primer. Sounds like the gun just ran out, so that was the perfect amount. And uh, there you have it. So we went from bare aluminum to uh, primer. You can see that gun lays that primer down nice, not a lot of peel. Uh, there's nothing wrong with those guns, you know. A lot of guys seem to have trouble getting the uh, product wet out on the panel. Uh, you know, you don't want to put it too wet, but a lot of it's the way you have the fan adjusted and if the uh, product is uh, properly atomizing it's very important to have the uh, fan adjustment correct on the gun uh, the only time I ever ran uh, round the fan down is if I'm painting a roof on a you know an industrial situation large bus something like that and you can't get to the middle of it uh, or if you're doing under the hood or you know but uh, you don't want to get too crazy with that because it's piling the material on when you uh, narrow that fan so uh, that's what we're looking like. That's uh, we're in primer. We'll let that flash off and uh, probably uh, get back on this one uh, tomorrow morning or something. So there's the two how to get to uh, bare aluminum to primer videos. And uh, next time you see this, we'll be putting some paint on it or uh, it'll be gone. <laughs>